when Dr. Van Fleet first talked to me about having surgery, I was kind of reluctant because you always hear the horror stories. You know, people would tell me don't have back surgery because you're going to be worse off or whatever. So I was really hesitant. But when I came in and talked to him about it, he made me feel so comfortable and he was pretty confident in um, doing this non-invasive procedure that things would turn out really good. My back pain started probably about five years ago um, and I just tolerated it because I had heard bad stories about um, back surgery and whatever so um, I just tried to do um, minimal not to um, create a lot of pain but the things that I had trouble doing was um, just basic like walking um, standing on one spot for for very long um, if I stood more than just a few minutes my legs would go numb down to my toes but what happened in certain individuals is that the disc space undergoes degenerative change as the disc space undergoes that degenerative change on occasion the nerve roots behind the disc space can become sensitized and that will produce this so-called discogenic back pain the symptoms of discogenic back pain tend to be chronic, usually across the low back, and it can radiate down into the hip on one side or the other. Usually there's not much leg pain associated with this, but it can radiate down as far as the buttock or even the proximal thigh. I have um, a young daughter, and it was very hard for me to hold her for any amount of time um, standing up. Um, I was referred to Dr. Van Fleet, and we met, and he um, did some x-rays and MRI, kind of talked to me about what um, my problem was with my um, disc degeneration. And so the first thing we tried was physical therapy. Um, and I did physical therapy for about three to six months. Um, and at the end of that, the back pain was still there. Um, it hadn't lessened at all. The, the treatment modalities are very straightforward and tend to be uh, what we will prescribe most frequently for patients with low back pain in general. Usually we start off with physical therapy to work on core conditioning. Uh, truncal strengthening is very important and it helps to actually increase blood flow and diminish inflammation. The other thing that we like to employ is anti-inflammatory medications and usually a tincture of time will help most patients respond as far as their back pain is concerned. Usually these patients are treated for a minimum of six months, not operatively, before we consider doing any kind of surgical intervention. So then um, I met back again with him and that's when he did um, a discogram to find out exactly where my source of pain was. The first that we like to do is we try to confirm the diagnosis with that of discography. Discography is a test, typically a provocative test, which serves to basically reproduce the symptoms that the patient experiences on a regular basis. This is done by placing needles into the disc bases at three levels to see if we can pro uh, provide concordance of the pain, meaning that it reproduces the pain that the patient experiences on a regular basis. In Beth's situation, her pain was reproduced at the L5-S1 level. When it was injected, it was negative at the L4-5 and the L3-4 level, meaning it did not reproduce her pain. So we had a patient with concordant discography at L5-S1 and negative at L4-5 and L3-4. And I ended up having um, three spinal injections to try to alleviate the pain. Um, the first one was successful, but it didn't last for very long, and the other two were not successful at all. Um, and so at that time, it's when Dr. Van Fleet started talking to me about the um, doing surgery. We decided to go ahead with the surgery, um, and I really didn't know what to expect in terms of how long I was gonna be, have to be off work or anything, but um, I had the surgery done on a Thursday evening and um, had an overnight stay in the hospital. It's done through two small incisions and generally is done with an overnight stay in the hospital. The complication rate is very low with this type of procedure and usually would include things such as bleeding and infection. Our infection rate with this type of operation is less than 1%. Neurologic injury, spinal fluid leakages, also less than 1% with this minimally invasive technique. Basically after the surgery it was just like immediately relief of pain. My only pain after the surgery was just from the surgery itself and the healing process. Um, I was actually only off work for um, a week and then I went back to work um, for one week of part-time, um, half days, and then the next week went back to work full-time. So what you can see here, Beth, this is the film. This is your six-month post-operative check, mm -hmm. looking at you from the side. And what you can see are the fusion cage in between the vertebral bodies here. We have the screws in, coming in from the sides. And then you can see that this is filling in very nicely with bone. That's why it looks 
white, this disk space, for example, right here is very clear, mm -hmm. which means that that's a normal disk space, whereas this one here is all white and it looks like the adjacent bone. So this is basically fused bone in the front. So this is fusing very nicely in the front. And then as you look at it from behind, and you can see the screws at the right side and the left side, the two screws here at five and S1. And then you can see the cage here, again, represented by the dots. And this is all filled in with bone. So it looks very good at this point in time. It looks like you're fused very well. And this is what you hope to see. This disk space right here looks fine. No problems with degeneration at that point and so you have a nice solid fusion. It's great now, I can walk long distances. Um, if we go do something that requires a lot of walking or getting in and out of a car, which I couldn't do before without just being in a lot of pain, I don't have any problems now. So um, Dr. Van Fleet is truly my hero.